a Land Rover 4.0 and the other day the oil light stayed on and I could hear the rods and mains knocking and the oil light went off and while they quieted it down they weren't all together quiet it runs nice when it warms up all the noise goes away or at least most of it so I'm gonna fire it up here I can see pieces of copper all kinds of stuff this is not what you want to see when you look at your oil pan. Let's see if we can get a better view here. Put a drop of light. So we'll be scraping all that out, cleaning it up real pretty. Okay, we're here. Um, with the timing cover off of the uh, 4 liter. Now, I just pulled all the screws out of the oil pump cover. And um, there's a screwdriver I used. So you have to use uh, a rather large screwdriver. And um, got to have a good tip on it. Can't be all busted up. Now, I have not planned this out, so we don't know what we're going to see in here. Well, let's see. We have a good bit of scoring mark. Let's run our fingernail over that. More than I generally want to see. Now this plate uh, can be repaired because it's just a flat metal plate with a bunch of holes in it. What we can do is we can file this down or mill it down or sand it down. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, then give it to a machine shop and tell them you need that. You need this surface milled down so it's perfectly flat. And what that'll do, that'll reduce the clearance between these gears and the side plate. So now let's, let's take these gears out, see what we have here to offer. The ends, I don't know how it's coming out on the video. Looking at this, it's, I can see it's digested quite a bit of grit. Quite a bit. Come on, sweetheart. There we go. And see all the uh, grinding marks, all the dirt that's been through it, and uh, putting in a little bit of our purple cleaner, and uh, can see that right on the teeth there. She's been. She's been chewing on some stuff. If I run my finger across it, it's very rough. That's not good. All these gears, all these surfaces here should be perfectly smooth. You know, a little bit of wear over the years is acceptable. Um, now, looking in here, 
this doesn't feel as bad as this. Okay. This I can I can feel it. This here, it's marked up. But really it's all that's all it is. It's just marked. It's a little rough. But uh it is not so bad that my fingernails get caught. If your fingernail gets caught, okay, I mean right right here. I can I can catch my fingernail. I don't like it. This surface here. It's good. Now, if you pull your oil pump, and this surface here has deep gouges, you may just need a new time cover. And uh, that's going to be up to you. I mean, a new set of gears is better than the old set of gears, so you're going to have an increase in pressure. And when you mill this down, it is going to reduce the clearance and increase your pressure. So whether or not you replace your gear assembly, and we will be replacing it, whether or not you replace it is up to you. I would recommend replacing the gear assembly, absolutely. Having this milled or sanding it down yourself, um, or filing it down yourself, whichever you prefer. Because that uh, all has a good result. You're in here, <laughs> and uh, let's not let's not do this twice. Now I have here a crank pulley, and what we need to talk about here is the surface upon which the seal rides on. Again, it's old, and this lip here is normal, right there. That's okay. But this surface here has to be perfectly flat. And you can see I have some grooves. And when we put the seal, when we put the brand new seal on this surface, it's going to leak. Now, some of you may say, well, we won't put the seal as far in, or we'll put it a little farther in, and so we'll. The, we'll let the lip of the seal ride on a different location and therefore it'll seal. Well, it may seal. I'll say that. But what we do for this, because this is very this is very common for actual shafts, front seat, front crank, rear crank, cam seals. Um, it, it, it's just very common. So you can get a repair sleeve to slip over this. And it's only a couple thousandths thick. And what you do is uh, you take your shaft of whatever it is, crank, cam, uh, and you measure it, measure across it to get your diameter. Now I have a vernier caliper, and I'll show you uh, what that is when I reassemble this. I have the sleeve on order. I went to O'Reilly Auto Parts. And I ordered a repair sleeve. This shaft is 1.924 inches across. Now I had to get a sleeve that was as close as possible, a 1.934. So one hundredth of an inch off. We'll see how that slips over. Um, it's going to be very close. Unfortunately, um, they don't make one exactly for this. But nevertheless, we do need that. So uh, we will reassemble that with a repair sleeve. Put it over here. Let's take a look inside the truck. Now, if you've got high mileage, or frankly, anything over 60,000, and you're doing any operation where you expose a timing chain, I would recommend replacing the timing chain and the gears. Do the entire set, that is the two gears and the chain together. And as you can see, I've got lots of play. 185,000 miles, 
Time to go. That's way too much. The ceiling surface. There's a couple places that aren't too good. You know, the Rover seal has two widely separated flanges. And while it's designed to seal, dirt gets in there and gouges it up. So you need a repair sleeve. This one's national part number 99193. Now, this here is going to slip over very easily. They're really not supposed to do that. They're supposed to go in there really tight. Now the way they're designed, you put a tiny bit of sealer around it and press it on. But no one makes one exactly for the rover. So what we're going to do, we're going to peel this flange off. We took clippers, cut the flange, because this, this is a pop-off flange. It'll break when you bend it. If you can press your uh, sleeve on, then you can pop this flange off while on be while on your shaft because it'll uh, it'll hold it a lot better tension than I'm getting out with my hands so at any rate I'm gonna pull this off it might take me a little while because I'm gonna be careful there's two ways you can deal with uh, gouges one way is to just coat it with sealer and pound that thing on. But if your shaft is a tiny bit smaller, like mine, then we use a filler. And they tell you to do that. If you've got deep dip gouges, put a filler in there. In our case, it's going to be JB Weld. JB Weld's good for a lot of things. Now this sleeve is not too big got to watch it. You don't want to get a sleeve that's way too big for your seal to go over. Otherwise, you'll tear up your seal when you go to put your assembly back together. And always remember to lubricate it really well when you put it all back together. But this has to be clean and dry. Sleeve clean and dry. And um, a little bit of filler on there to make, make sure that uh, the oil is not going to get through. You can also put some non-hardening sealer, something like... Uh, Aviation form a gasket. That always works. And um, so the JB Weld will make up for any difference in the shaft size and it'll fill in the, the grooves. And uh, the, both the JB Weld and the sealer will keep the oil from getting in between the shaft and the sleeve. So I'm going to put that all together and then continue the video. Okay, recording. So we mixed up the JB Weld. And um, I coated all the grooves with JB Weld. Well, first you, you have to clean everything off with... Uh, brake parts cleaner works well. It smells terrible. It's very flammable, so be careful. So I coated the grooved area with the JB Weld. Now I did note very carefully what part of the shaft the seal rode on and having taken the lip off, that's an installation lip, which you don't need in this application because it's a ten thousandths difference in the shaft and the uh, sleeve. So uh, I just had the sleeve, I cleaned it all up, cleaned the shaft up. Coated the grooved area with, uh, it's actually JB Quick. And, um, and then I slid the shaft on very carefully. And then taking a rag, uh, 
I cleaned up all the extra JB weld and the shaft and I should say the seal surface is nice and clean I'm gonna let that set up and this is our alternative to replacing the harmonic balancer because of the grooves in the seal surface and again the part number I used is see that's uh, national national wheel end components and that's what I used this is the installation cup because if if your shaft is uh, is a little bit larger than the sleeve which is okay then you would put this on and it would seat against the installation lip. And you pound it on there. And on to the next step. This is the oil pump cover. Now, I'm using a flat file bastard file file this down remember if you've got gouges in your oil cover then oil pump cover they have to be dealt with if they're too deep now I could catch my finger on these so I didn't like that if you're gonna file this down you have to remember that the entire surface has to be at the same level. Now I'm using a piece of silicon to hold it. I don't expect everyone has a piece of silicon sitting in their garage. But you can always go to the Kmart or the Walmart and pick up one of those uh, anti-skid pads that you put underneath a piece of carpet. Just don't expect to bring it back in the house after you're finished with it. It's going to be full of metal. So we have a nice flat file with a bastard cut. And that's doing a pretty good job. I'm going to use a uh, sander with some very fine sandpaper to smooth polish this up. And uh, that's once I get most of these grooves out of it. See now, they're not bad enough that I catch my fingers in them. I can feel them, but I'm not catching catching fingernails. So I will continue to work that. This will take about 15 minutes, I guess. It does look a little rough to finish, but I'm gonna I'm gonna dress that up. That'll look nice when I'm finished. Okay, 220 grit sandpaper on a random orbital sander, and not much sanding. Oops, got a little dirt on there. I want you to take a look at that finish. It's got some little grooves. Not much. Not much at all. I mean, they're barely marks. You can see it's a nice smooth finish. Okay, torque wrench, 13 newton meters is what all these little screws have for torque rating. It's very important to uh, pack this with plenty of clean, please understand, clean, perfectly clean grease. Okay. 
if your tub of grease has a whole bunch of uh, little black dots from the last time you did a bearing, a bearing repack, don't use it. Go out and buy yourself a new one. Stuff's going to be perfectly clean. Goo these things up really well. Because the only thing keeping it from tearing itself apart is going to be the amount of grease that you put in here. Come on, sweetie. You can use Vaseline if you want. I personally, I've always used heavy grease. You're going to need this because the oil pump, being brand new, needs to develop pressure. Oopsie daisy. And I got grease all over my phone. That's how it goes. And we gotta actually orient this with the crankshaft keyway. Twelve o'clock. There we go. Feels like that gear is bigger than the one I pulled out. They may have added a few thousands here or there to uh, allow for wear on the casing. That's perfectly fine by me. Alright, so let's grease this up. All right, I didn't show you how to put the tiny can on. It's really, really, really simple. Can you see the marks on the two, the two sprockets? It's real obvious on the top one. There we go, we can see it now. Big dot on the top, little dot on the bottom. They have to face each other. Now, if your timing chain's all worn out, you're gonna take the old sprockets off and then you're going to put the new one on, and they're going to be misaligned just a little bit. So you may have to put your harmonic balancer back on and give it just a little twist to make it go on. You can fit the uh, top gear on loosely with the bolt and then press on it while you move the harmonic balancer back and forth. 
and that'll fall right into the keyway up top. But uh, what I'll do is uh, orient that keyway to 12 o'clock so it'll match the oil pump. I realized a little later that uh, I put in the, the center gear in the wrong position, like a tooth off, but uh, it's in. And since this is a this is a distributedless engine, I'm not going to worry about uh, keeping it up on num number one top dead center. But uh, so, and uh, grease it up. I don't know if you can see the grease. Grease your chain. Grease your gears, because there's no oil to begin with. Okay, so let's see if we can take a look at this. If you use a repair sleeve, it's imperative that you check to see your seal is riding on the new sleeve. You can see that there's, oh, a, maybe a, a 32nd of an inch or a 16th of an inch of the sleeve sticking out beyond the seal, which means the seal is riding on our new uh, sleeve and that uh, it's not going to be blowing oil through. Okay. Now I did use uh, JB Quick, which sets up, they say it's ready for use in like 30, 30 minutes, not 30 seconds. <laughs> but um, what you can do, if you're doing this all in one shot, make that the very first thing that you repair. I mean the very first thing, when all the parts are on the ground, uh, well when you first get your crankshaft pulley off, repair that with the sleeve and then set it aside. Then the JB Quick will set up, and then hours later, when you are putting it all back together, the JB Quick will have set up, and that sleeve will be uh, a part of the crankshaft pulley. Okay. So you can see the seal real well from under, underneath. Now, since this operation I'm doing involves uh, pulling the oil pan. I'm going to show you a way to uh, torque down your crankshaft bolt. You want to jam the engine to keep it from moving. Well, in your crankshaft, you have counterbalance holes. I used a piece of wood for a cushion, and I use a half extent extension. And that, my friends, will keep the crankshaft from moving and it doesn't hurt anything. Not getting very good light here. See the holes? Those are in there. That's counterbalance holes. You stick something in there and use a cushion so you don't mess up the aluminum block. Crank that pulley bolt right down. When you get your new bearings, lay them all out and inspect them. They have to be perfect. If there's any flaw in every one, any one of them, then return them. Now, I've looked all these over. Say, what's it, what's it look like when it's perfect? Well, there's no gouges, no scratches. The lighting in here is not the best. But uh, there's, they're not bent, they're perfect. So make sure all your bearings are in perfect shape before you install them. Alrighty, so we're going to take loose the, uh, the rod bearings here. 10 millimeter, half inch drive, 12 point socket. And uh, I'm just going to crack them loose. Now, if you've been having your engine knock, chances are these caps are going to fall out. And I mean that literally. 
You don't want them falling onto the floor. You don't want them getting banged up. Because we're going to use them again. And these are specific to the rod they're coming off. All right, we're going to pull the top rod bearing out. Now, sometimes these things fall right out. I mean, literally. Because I'm pushing the rod up with my fingers very gently. Now I have a breaker bar with socket on top, or not on top, but engaged into the front crankshaft pulley so that I can move the crankshaft out of the way a bit. And that way I can get this bearing right out there. The bearing slid down. You see that? How it's moving? It slid right out. When stuff's worn out, it tends to fall apart on you. Now, that is not perfectly smooth, I'll tell you that. But I can't feel anything. It's all shiny. I don't see any gouges. There's no chunks. If that was a new crankshaft, I'd return it. But this is not a new crankshaft. This is 186,000. And that's good enough to put a bearing into. All right, we're going to put the cap on here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to pull the piston down a bit. That'll make it easier. There we go. I'm going to rotate the crankshaft around. I'll put my fingers up over the cap. All right. It's lined up nice. Now we're going to pull that right down onto the crank. Nice and easy. Right there. Rotate the crank around. So we can have the two meet in the middle. Come on, sweetheart. There we are. Just came right down, sat on the crank. I'm going to look under there. Check to make sure the bearing is still in place, still flush. Put her in place. Nice and gently. You get a few threads worked on there. Okay, I'll fall out on the ground. These bolts have been wiped off. To make sure that we don't have any contaminants going back in the engine. Take one a little bit, take the other a little bit. Torque spec is 38 foot pounds. First stage is 20, 20 foot pounds. We're going to go snug, snug, okay, snug and 20. <laughs> Point being. Thirty. I'm gonna wiggle that crank, center that bearing. That way, if it's crooked, tension on the bolts pulls it into the center. you tighten these down and you cannot move your crank, you've done something wrong. Verify torque. Oops. It's at 38. I want you to look at the end of the bearing or at the middle of the caps. Right there. There should be no, no space at all on the sides of your bearing caps. Okay, no, no, and you should be able to move this thing. If it's jammed, take it apart. Let's take a look at what went wrong. 
Here are the bearings. Not very good. Can you see those grooves? Right up through there. Right up through here. Right up through there. That's what happens when there's a lot of dirt in the oil. Gouges up your bearings. I've broken the main cap bolts loose and I'm gonna pull out the mains and we're gonna replace the bearings much as we did the uh, the rods okay so now we're we're unbolted Let's see what we can do here so I'm pressing inward like this to grip I'm not doing it real hard Pulling downward. There we go. That's a girl. Now, all right. I've removed the main caps and uh, taken off the serpentine belt. This will allow the crankshaft to drop a tiny bit this way. It'll actually hang on the timing chain. Now, I'm going to take the screwdriver, go on the edge. Of one of my main bearings and I'm gonna work the crank back and forth there we go so now it's moving it just moved up stick it in there there we go it's starting to come out now I want to get a nice clear picture of this so everybody knows what's going on I'm just gonna hold it still. You see that bear? How it's come out of it? Now I'm gonna take a feeler gauge and a thick one, and I'm gonna run it up this side. I'm gonna run it up that side. See, there's no bear in there. It's just a gap. Alrighty. So here is. A brand new bearing. Here are the old bearings. Let's see if we get good shots of these. Whoops. Not much left on that one. Something to remember is all of the caps are marked. See that mark there? That's number three. That's an arrow. The arrow points towards the front of the engine. It's very important. So uh, don't mess that up. Okay, for the number four bearing, you don't have to remove the exhaust manifold. It does come out just enough. Okay. And over here, at the starter, it comes out just enough. I do believe I have to remove the starter to get the last bolt. I mean, you can't see it in there. It's in there, it's a hex bolt. Hex it. I wanted to show you uh, me pulling this upper bearing out it's a lot of shiny stuff I know there we go just touched it it came out a little bit see that right there now this is terrible uh, let's see if we can get that again right there see it's sticking out and I'm going to take the feeler gauge because it's got some flex to it and it'll get around. And I can, oops, I can push that. Watch it come. It come. There we are. I need two hands for this next operation, so I'm going to uh, stop the video right there. So from here to right there, there, now, now that's good, right there. See that bearing slipping out? That's because I'm getting around the back end, pushing it with a flexible feeler gauge. Now, I'm going to finish that 
by using the motion of the crank with my breaker bar up there to work it out. Alrighty. Take a look. Got that bearing started in there. And because these are new bearings, they go in really tight. As you saw, the old ones come right out. That's because they're missing quite a few thousands of bearing. Now if I use my, my uh, breaker bar here, I'll work the crank back and forth as I put just a little bit of pressure. Put a little bit of pressure right there. And I stabilize it with my thumb. And I rotate it. Little by little by little by little. It'll go all the way in. Go all the way around. Now the back of this bearing does not have any oil. And I used a little bit of brake clean and compressed air to clean out the bearing surface up there because it had a lot of oil in it. As a bearing wears out, it'll sometimes allow oil behind it. You put a bearing in with oil behind it, it'll spin or rip your engine apart. All right. All righty. If you look right there, bearing is now flush. Over here, bearings flush, the notch is lined up and it's in there. Now you got to make sure when you put this bearing on and you're sliding it around, you keep <laughs> you keep this notch in line, okay, with the notch on the bearing. Otherwise, you'll wind up trying to seat it, and it'll be crooked. You can't put it together like that. Here, the, the notch is lined up, it's in there, and it's flush. Nice and clean. Okay, number one bearing. I got a little WD on my finger. We'll make sure it goes in right, nice and smooth. Always remember, arrow forward, number one, match up the notches. Let's see what we got here. Oops. All right, now, got to make sure this is lined up. Oh, nice. did I used the bolt as a lever to line up the bearing the bearing cap you look inside there make sure your bearing is still seated it's not pull it out I'm not going to tighten that down just putting it in place so I can get these others in once you all it once all the new bearings are in, then we'll torque it down. In order to get the last bearing replaced, we have to do a little bit of surgery. And you can see here, I have removed the inspection cover to expose the flywheel. That'll let me lower the last end cap right here a little more easily. Now the starter has to come off. Get some light on that. There's the starter. To get the upper bolt on the starter, you have to take off the heat shield. For me to get this heat shield off, I have to remove the oxygen sensor. Right there. On the other side, if I can get this 
There is a crankshaft sensor. My hand on it. It's right here. It sits up against the block. It has a pair of 7 millimeter bolts. It has a little pin that runs on either, just on the inside, in between these, these tabs. And uh, it's not a Hall effect switch, but it is a crankshaft sensor. Let's the computer know where the engine is in its cycle. You can see here, the side bolt doesn't need to come all the way out on this one. And we did not need to pull off the exhaust manifold. Okay, I got the starter off, the O2 sensor out, heat shield, and uh, cross bolt. Starter's held on by an 8 millimeter Allen bolt. And you can see, gaping hole, right there. That's the cross bolt. It's also an 8 millimeter. The heat shield is held on with a clip and a bolt. See that little hole in the motor mount? That uh, bolts through to the heat shield. And uh, the O2 sensor can be unscrewed without unplugging it because there's enough thread that uh, it won't twist so much that it harms the harness. This last barren is a little tricky to get out. Now, if you take these bolts out, it's not going to fall out on my lap. That's because on the sides there are what they call crucifix seals. And they are holding it in right now. So I threaded in the oil pan bolts that go into this bearing. And I'm going to use what's called a ladyfoot rent, ladyfoot bar to pull it downward. And it is moving nicely. Nice and slow. I'll use a screwdriver as a fulcrum. I think that's what you call it. Yeah. Coming out nice. Come a little thicker. Raise this up. There we go. Something a little taller. Coming nice. I don't want the ball. I'm trying to catch it here. There we go. Let's get the wiggle out now. Here is. Crucifix seal. There's our bearing. Now you'll notice the middle bearing has flanges. That's called your thrust bearing. This engine takes its thrust on the top. Okay, a lot of engines have uh, the top and the bottom bearing with a flange. This one takes it on the top. And, uh, this flange keeps the crankshaft from walking to and fro. When you're slipping this bearing up into the top, you have to eyeball how big the gap is on each side. And you line it up, and uh, as long as you're within a couple thousandths. All right, everything's snugged down. I have all of the uh, side bolts in along both sides of the engine. And I'm going to take a torque wrench, torque them all down to 10 foot pounds. Get my other hand in there. Okay, everything's at 10 foot pounds. Now we're going to go to 53. And we have to do them in order. Always check to see exactly what order. You have to torque them in. Now, torqued one cap. 
and I'm going to move it just a little bit. That verifies that I'm not binding the shaft. Now the rear bearing, rear main bearing, is torqued to 66 foot-pounds instead of 53 like all the others. The rear main is not all that difficult to put together. They have to put it in perfectly straight because of those side seals. I lubricated the side seals with some gasket sealer. It's the aviation gasket, aviation gasket sealer. That stuff will never dry. I did use RTV on the mating surface exactly where the book says don't do this operation without your Land Rover manual. There we go, we're not binding. And I will torque the sides down to 33, rev revolve it twice, and retorque everything. This is a flare nut crow foot wrench. It's on the end of a, an extension. You're going to need this to access the side main bearing bolt. That sits behind the exhaust manifold. Oops, there we go. That way you can get a torque wrench on it and torque it down. Okay, we're all together here. Everything is torqued, um, properly staged at the correct torque levels, and then final torque. Then the engine's been rotated twice, and then everything retorqued just to make sure. And don't be surprised if you get just a smidgen more out of uh, one or two bolts, because it does happen. Alrighty, I've got a hand pump hooked up to the oil cooler line. I have the uh, oil filter on. Starter's on. Oil pan's on. I made sure to mix in zinc additive with my oil. So um, I'm using 1540 just, be, just because a little more viscosity won't hurt on such an old engine. And I'm going to pump this. I'm going to put a gallon into it this way and then uh, put the rest through the top. Now you can sit there and crank the engine until you get oil pressure but this is a much surer way of uh, ensuring that the oil is all through the engine so that when you fire it up it doesn't blow all apart on you. The oil is topped up. I have unplugged the coil pack. That way you won't get any spark and we can crank this engine. I've taken out the fuel injector fuse and the fuel pump fuse. We don't want any chance of this engine starting up at all. There we are. Now we have a lifter that's uh, collapsed, but uh, I don't hear any rods. I don't hear any mains. I fixed that exhaust leak. Not too worried about the lifter. That just may free up. They come and go. The rods and mains are renewed. New oil pump, new timing chain. I have to say this, it, it does run smoother. That timing chain not flapping around like that. I just heard another lifter start to tap. 
and then it went away. Now, if it doesn't fly apart on you in the first 10 miles, it'll last uh, another 50,000. At least the bottom end will. The cloud oil pressure, my lifters are relatively quiet. For 186,000 miles, I'm happy that the lifters are even quiet. So there we have it, folks. This cost approximately $425 in parts, give or take. If you're going to do this on the ground, make sure you support the vehicle by the frame, not the wheels. That's so that your front axle can drop down and give you all the room in the world. If you do it in your front yard, start at 6 a.m. on Saturday, you'll finish after dark on Sunday. If you're doing it in a shop, it should take you maybe a day. You can hear the difference between the beginning of the video and now. I know there's a lot not in this video. Sometimes I got involved in the operation, forgot to start filming. But uh, it covers most everything you need to do. And it gives you all the tech tips of doing a job like this, even in your front yard. The key is, don't get mad. If you find something difficult, Everything is a hurdle, and there is an end to the race. If you take your time, and you'll have an engine with 186,000 miles, it sounds like this, or maybe more. If your lifters were clacking before, like mine, it's probably due to low oil pressure. Now with a renewed oil pump, it's all nice and quiet. Have a good day. Happy rovering. Oh, if you want to post comments, make sure you post comments that are actually uh, substantive. Don't tell me I have a dirty motor. Don't tell me my uh, drop light uh, is held at the wrong angle. Say something actually technically material. That way the comments won't fill up with people just sounding off. And I'll sign off. Have a good day.